Ways you are secretly tricked by companies. Misleading visuals. We are a virtually graphic culture and we place faith in what we can see and as our dominant sense, it's what we have used to shape our perceptions of what the world is. It comes as no surprise that marketing agencies manipulate the visuals around us on a daily basis. Some of the best examples of this are in the food industry, where fast food franchises continually showcase burgers and tacos with the fillings pushed to the front of fresh produce that has been sprayed with water to suggest freshness. Most grocery stores also have a very strict visual criteria for vegetables and fruit. A huge proportion of perfectly edible and fresh produce was actually discarded at every step from the harvesting to the final selection on grocery stores, simply because they didn't look a certain way. Deceptive Labeling Tactics People these days tend to be more concerned about what they're putting into their bodies, which means taking the time to look at nutrient information on the side of their food. Most labels are organized according to quantity with the most common ingredients being at the top. One method companies use to skew this information is the redistribution of ingredients. A product that is high in sugar for example could be further divided into sucrose, corn syrup, brown sugar or dextrose and as long as each of these types of sugar are small enough, none of them will appear at the top of the ingredients list. Giving the impression that a product is healthier than it actually is using technical or scientific language can also be used to hide potentially unhealthy substances. Misleading commercials Most blatant example of this is in car commercials. When you watch any car commercial or car scenes in movies chances are that the car you're watching isn't actually real. In other words, most of the cars you actually see have actually been created on the computer. To achieve this visual effects, companies like the mill actually employ a bare-bones automobile brake that looks like a pared-down contraption from a Mad Max movie. With it they're able to transpose the image of any car design or brand over the top of it in post-production, eliminating the need to use real cars. They do it because it saves money getting the real thing and it also means they can finish the commercial and start promoting the car prior to its full completion date. Anthropomorphism it may just be a human quirk but we love giving human qualities to animals and inanimate things. We give pet names to our cars. We scream our computers when they're not working and we assume the weather is out to get us. In other words, when we attribute characteristics to an object, we immediately begin to empathize with it. Marketers have long known how to use this cognitive bias to their favor. Simply put the anthropomorphization of brands is a sneaky way to make us trust the brand and make an emotional connection with it. And the advertising slogans. What's the best way to advertise something well? How about not advertising it? This is the approach that some companies have taken by offering transparency. The principle behind their strategy is similar to reverse psychology. A number of studies have found that by intimating that someone shouldn't buy their product. Under Armour, a sportswear company which has continually showcased itself as an underdog to bigger conglomerates like Nike. They took a similar anti-advertising approach by advocating that instead of just doing it, that real success requires hard work and perseverance. The honesty of their message seems to have paid off. Decoy Pricing the decoy effect or the asymmetric dominance effect refers to a tendency in humans to change their preferences based on whether or not a decoy product is introduced, that is inferior to other choices. The best example of this is when a consumer is confronted with two computers with similar qualities and prices. They may have a hard time choosing between them, however when a third computer is advertised that is both pricier and has a smaller hard drive than either. It automatically makes the first two choices seem all that more attractive and encourages more reckless spending. Overpricing Have you ever eaten at a fancy restaurant and noticed one of their most expensive dishes and then decided to go with the cheaper option? 
you may have fallen into a marketing ploy related to a cognitive bias call anchoring. The basic premise is that potential customers will rely heavily on the first piece of information that they see. For example, if the first entry on a menu is $100, we typically set that as our baseline price. Anything lower seems much more attractive, even if it's also heavily overpriced. Reduced portion sizes. Do you find yourself whining about how much air there seems to be in bags of crisps these days? In the food industry in particular reduced portions have become an increasing trend on the surface. This might seem like a great idea given the Western world's obesity epidemic, that is until you discover that the prices for products don't reflect the diminished packet sizes. In other words, companies realize that reducing portion sizes, instead of increasing the price makes the products seem more competitive. Which is why Toblerone even recently changed the design of their bars, 